Peace, everybody. I'm Isaiah IJ, and today I want to talk to you all. I want to talk to you guys about the musical journey and vault of Andre 3000. Now, let me be clear this video is for entertainment and educational purposes, but not in the entertainment way that strikes about controversy but in a way that will bring excitement and light to the genius of Andre 3000. Now that we got that clear, let's get into the breakdown of things. As a supporter and someone who loves research, I've been following news on Andre 3000 for a long time. I mean, I found articles that date back to when your boy was in the second grade. But since we're talking about second grade, let's take it back to the year 2003. Speaker Box and Love Below was released on September 20th, 2003. Speaker Box and the Love Below were originally solo albums by the two. Before these albums came out, Andre and Big Boy were already on their separate paths when it came to their musical journey. As Andre Benjamin prepared for his first solo album, he had the smash hit Hey Ya sitting in his vault for four years. Four years before the masses heard it. The song was originally recorded in 2000 before Stankonia came out. According to Andre, this was the first time he played guitar on a track. However, Hey Ya was not the only solo track that Andre recorded in 2000. According to journalist Mario Cruz who did the cover story on Outkast for The Fader in 2003, she mentioned that she heard three unreleased tracks that has not seen the light of day from Andre 3000. The three tracks being Nostalgia, Miss Telescope, and Blueberry Mansions. Nostalgia is a song where he talks about a love that makes him feel like 10th grade lunch. Miss Telescope is a song where Andre is looking for a star while realizing he's a comet. And then Blueberry Mansions is a piano based composition that would make a grown man cry. These joints still remain unreleased. In 2001, Andre Benjamin and Brian Barber teamed up to develop the idea to do a film containing the songs from what we would eventually hear as The Love Below. Details on this film is unknown. Who knows if the film was shot and just shelved or the plans for it was just never followed through. Now, let's mesh the past with the present. The first time Andre spoke about where he wanted to go musically was in 2003 in an interview with The Guardian. In this interview, he spoke about wanting to form a jazz-influenced band releasing an instrumental album. He was quoted saying, getting into things that an outcast fan would not expect. Now, what have I been saying for years? Even in 2005, in an interview with IGN, he was asked about his plans for a solo album, to which he replied, Yeah, I probably will. I don't know if it will be solo. I will probably start a new group, a new band, or something. Here we are in 2024, and he has exactly that. A band featuring heavyweights like D'Antoni Parks, Carlos Nino, Syria and Nate Maserro. Andre himself will tell you. Like I didn't plan to be the flute nigga. I didn't plan to be that, you know. It's just kinda like, it happens and you go with it, you know. But he's had this vision in his mind for 20 years. Now of course, he didn't see himself playing the flute, but he definitely saw this happening. And it's so funny how the good Lord works. You envision it in your mind one way, but God takes the boat and show you in a whole nother direction that there's something bigger and better than you imagine. Can we get the congregation to say, mm -hmm. Now going into 2006, the last Outkast album was the brilliant Idlewild. 
another album that displays the separation of Andre and Big Boy. However, the only known outtake from the Idlewild era is a joint called The Clock. which features Andre 3000 and Deborah Killings. The funny thing about this track was the only way you could hear it was on the Idlewild DVD as an outtake. However, now you can find it on YouTube, but it's not officially released. This song is so beautiful. The four on the floor drum programming, the keyboard work that I assume is by Kevin Kendrick and Andre 3000. And I just love this track because the layers in Andre's vocals, the layers in his vocals is just out of this world. My assumption for this track not being released could be the fact that he already had a time clock related song with Chronometrophobia already on the album. But man, it would have been lovely just to have that joy on Idlewild as well. Now, whoever is listening out there, you know 20 years of Idlewild is coming up in two years. All I'm saying is if you guys are gonna reissue that album, hey, I'll take some bonus material along with the clock. I'm just saying. I'd be more than happy to spend some, some money on that. After the release of Idlewild, Andre goes on and embarks on his journey as an actor. People don't really count this, but the first time we get anything related to a solo project from Andre 3000 is Class of 3000, his TV show with Cartoon Network. Only the first season of the music was released officially but the music from season two never saw the light of day. Not sure why that was the case, but if I had to make an assumption, my assumption would be that the music in season two was a little bit limited in comparison to season one. But man, <laughs> joints like the farm song. You can plant a little seed and watch it grow, 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 grow. Yeah, I know. Quite amazing when you look at it. Clean up. Check it out. Mm, did that. Check it out. Mm, I did that one too. Check it out. Mm. And Philly Phil come home, which is like a nod to Prince's 1999. All of those joints were fire. My little brother and I treated those Friday nights like it was Super Bowl Sunday. We would get out of school and just look forward to 8 p.m. to catch the new episode of Class of 3000. I know, I know people overlook that show. I know there's people that don't even know that show even existed. But that show and the music even still to this day are gems from 2007 to 2011 we got guest features from him here and there he hopped on the remixes to throw some d's walk it out and deuces meanwhile appearing on joints with john legend fonsworth bentley and the gorillas even having an uncredited verse on lil wayne's the carter four album but it wasn't until 2012 where talks about a new Andre 3000 album began to surface. The first time Andre Benjamin made mentions of it is in an interview he did with GQ for his Gillette campaign. He talked about how he wanted to get back to having fun and just being himself as normal. But then a bombshell hit when Andre talked to Billboard and said, some days I feel like I'll do it, some days I don't. Some days I feel like I don't need to, some days I feel like I want to do it before I die. So I don't know where to fall. 
I am just hoping one day I get that inspiration. He also said in that same interview, it's a feeling for me. I can't just throw an album out, an album to be rapping. And I don't even know if it will be rap. I don't even know what it will be. During that period of promoting his campaign with Gillette to also bring awareness to prostate cancer, he expressed how much he did write when it came to ideas, melodies, and lyrics. And though he said that, he made it very clear that he didn't really feel motivated to release a project. 2012 came and went with no solo album from Andre, just guest features with Frank Ocean, T.I., and Rick Ross. But came 2013, which seemed to be the turning point in Andre's life, both good and bad. On May 28th, 2013, the day after Andre's birthday, his mother, Sharon Benjamin, passed away. Though this happened, it seemed like Andre was finding ways to keep it going. In July of 2013, the internet went crazy when a video surfaced of Mike Will made it and Andre 3000 in the studio together. 3000, made it mafia, Mike Will. Like, yo, turn them cameras off. That video had everyone going nuts. We were finally getting close to an Andre 3000 solo album. The thought of it got more real when Stephen Hill, a BET executive, bumped into Andre. And Stephen Hill asked Andre if the Jimi Hendrix biopic was still coming out. And Andre replied, yeah, and I got a solo album coming out top of the year. It's just got real. But pump the brakes, pump the brakes though. Days later, a representative for Andre came out and said there's no official confirmation. Just like that, back to square one. However, this could have been a surprise attack. Could have been in the early stages of things. Who knows what could happen. 2014 had arrived and things took a turn for Andre 3000 again. This time, his father passed away. In an eight month span, Andre lost both of his parents. But some way, somehow, he found ways to keep it going. The Jimi Hendrix biopic was out. Him and Big Boy reunited for their 20th anniversary. All while these things were happening, Andre was in a dark place. He was very transparent about not wanting to do the tour and feeling like a sellout, which led him to create the jumpsuits to bring something new and fresh to the table. But 2014 and 2015 came and still no solo album from Andre 3000. It wasn't until 2016 where we started to see him resurface on the scene with one of the greatest feature runs ever in music. In 2016, we saw him hop on tracks with Divine Council, Travis Scott, A Tribe Called Quest, Kid Cudi, and many others. Anticipation for a new Andre 3000 solo album came about when Cardo Got Wings tweeted a picture of Andre recording at Cardo's house. According to Cardo, there's not just one song of the two collaborating together, but in fact, multiple joints that lie in the vault Less. about that question no nah, plan really i'm just sitting you know just sitting with some shit you know what i'm saying just we got some shit i can't right. say for what say i can say for i can say for me for sure for sure i don't know what he's doing to be honest play the b and shit he's like man i like that he's like it's mike hot i'm stumbling this shit in my house nigga i got the little shit going whatever i'm recording through garage band mind you the song that we did this nigga Johnny Giuliano had to mix it. It was so rough. Dog. It probably sound hard as hell on the raw side with it. The the first version I sent, distortion. Man. Mm. Yeah. So many records I got with this nigga, bro. Like with this nigga just freestyling. Like a bunch of shit. Not stopping. But in that song that we got in particular, like that song is different. Like it's People hear some. I just, I just gotta put together the right way. 
to this day those joints have not seen the light of day that same year Catronada also posted a photo with him and Andre in the studio together nothing as far as a solo album from Andre in the year of 2016 came about but 2017 was the year to look forward to with the signs of Andre dropping looking more and more real as time progressed. In May of 2017, Organized Noise did an interview with DJ Black and Rico Wade dropped some news about Andre. You know, Andre has a solo album that he had, we hadn't put out yet. So it's almost like we kind of be waiting on, like that's a dope record that whenever he wants to decide how he wants to do it, he'll do it. So. We kind of be like letting him figure it out, like whenever he wants to do something or whatever. But if we ever need him for something, like we needed him for that one music that, that show, we're going to reach out. There it is. A whole Andre 3000 solo album sitting in the vault. Now we know that there is, in fact, an Andre 3000 album that has yet to see the light of day. But it wasn't until the interview with Complex where it seemed like the idea of a solo album was slipping away. In that interview, he talked about being older and seeing himself move away from the idea of releasing an album. He also expressed that the older he got, the less comfortable he felt when it came to rapping. Once again, we were back at square one. In an interview with GQ that year, promoting his line with Chatorn, he talked about the music in his vault being for his own personal satisfaction. He also said that when he passes away, people will find hours and hours of files. He echoed the same words in this piece like he did in the complex piece. He was transparent about feeling like he lost his step, like a boxer who's slowing down. However, at the end of the interview, he acknowledged that though he feels the way he does, he wasn't ready to hang up the glove. As he said, I think I have maybe two more Mayweather fights, or maybe one. Now, if you ask me, I felt like that was his way of saying like, listen, you guys could very well still get a couple albums out of me. Y'all might just get two, or maybe y'all might just get one. So for me, in my eyes, it seemed like an Andre 3000 solo album was very much so a possibility. The possibility seemed stronger when Andre appeared at the 2017 Complex Con to promote his line with Trey Torn where he sat at a desk in front of an audience and drew sketches. On the last page of his sketch, he wrote a thank you along with a message that said, hopefully music soon. Now, when I initially screen grabbed this, this was from a video, so that's why the quality isn't the greatest, but he indeed wrote this and this went over a lot of people's heads. It was never really acknowledged or talked about by the masses. The only thing that came from Andre 3000 in 2017 was a collaboration with NERD for Rolling Them Sevens. Another year came and went with no Andre 3000 album in sight. But in 2018, we got a surprise. On May 13th, 2018, on Mother's Day, Andre Benjamin released a project called Look Ma no hands dedicated to his mom and father who passed away the project contains two tracks me and my to bury your parents which features vocals by andre along with him on bass clarinet and the piano wizard kevin kendrick then you have the title track which is a 17 minute instrumental featuring andre on bass clarinet and james blake on piano now people don't know this, but the thing that blew me away about me and my was the fact that I learned that this track actually contained more instrumentation. It wasn't just a track that had vocals, bass, clarinet, and piano, but it actually had drums and bass that were later removed. So I do wonder if there is a different version of me and my lying in Andre's stash somewhere. This release was only on SoundCloud and I gotta say man, it would be so lovely to see a vinyl release for this record specifically. 
kind of breaks my heart i'm not gonna lie that people don't talk about this project when it comes to andre's musical journey and his genius it seemed like an andre 3000 comeback was definitely on the horizon especially when neil pogue in the interview with ok player revealed that andre was gonna be releasing a single very very soon no details of that track has been revealed and to this day that still remains unreleased it wasn't until 2019 where we heard from andre 3000 again when he appeared on james blake's where's the cat and anderson pax come home in the year of 2019 andre landed a role on the show dispatches from elsewhere where he plays the character fredwin while filming for the show in philly Andre went viral for walking around in random places playing this instrument. At the time, nobody knew what this instrument was. Was it a flute? Was it some type of special instrument? Either way it goes, he was just popping out in random places. It didn't matter if it was in the streets of Philly or in a Starbucks. You were going to see him playing this instrument. In my research, I discovered that this was in fact a double Mayan flute. However, this was not the first time Andre was posted playing this instrument. The first time he was seen with this flute was on Erica Badu's story in May of 2019, where him and Erica made a trip to Hawaii and that's where he was seen playing it. As Andre went viral for these random pop-ups with this flute, was this indication of where he was going musically? Is it possible that the instrumental album that he talked about in 2003 was finally something that was gonna happen? Those questions were answered when Andre appeared on Rick Rubin's Broken Record podcast in 2019. It was there when Andre revealed that he wasn't making that much music and not having the confidence to do so. Though he mentioned he was inspired by instrumental pieces, he made it very clear that he was not motivated to do a serious project. I haven't been making much music, man. My my focus is not there. My confidence is not there. Um, I tinker. I tinker a lot. Mm -hmm. um, like I'll just go to a piano and I'll set my iPhone down and just record what I'm doing, mm -hmm. move my fingers around and whatever happens. But I hadn't been motivated to do a serious project. Um, I'd like to, but it's just it's just not coming. Uh, in my in my own self, uh, I'm trying to figure out where do I where do I where do I sit, you know. I don't I, I don't even know what I am. And maybe I'm nothing. Maybe I'm not supposed to be anything. Maybe, yeah. you know, my history is kind of handicapping in a way. Now, for a lot of people that heard that news that appreciate Andre for them, it was over. There is no such thing as an Andre 3000 album coming out. But for me, when I heard those comments, my mind immediately wondered when was this interview done and i tell you no lie this is how i thought i genuinely felt like the interview was done way before he started filming dispatches from elsewhere i felt like the guy that was walking around in philly stopping in different places playing this flute that guy was different from the person that was talking in that interview you can tell that guy was on a journey that nobody could understand i just knew in my heart and spirit that we was gonna get an andre 3000 album someday but not in the way that people expect but something that he's always wanted to do and that thing was gonna be the thing that made him happy going into the 2020s the world changed corona came and shut down the world but still, Andre was making waves on social media, starting out by releasing the jumpsuit lines that he created in 2014 to bring awareness to the George Floyd situation. He also appeared on Goody Mob's No Cigar, 
Meanwhile, still going viral for appearing in certain places with his flute. In 2021, he shut the game down with his verse on Ye's Life of the Party. But in 2022, for the first time, Andre 3000 contributed his flute work to some tracks. It was announced that his contribution would be featured on four songs on the Everything Elsewhere soundtrack. Now, the news didn't make waves like the life of the party verse or the random pop-ups that he was doing in different places around the world. But I knew that an Andre 3000 comeback was on the horizon and that we were about to experience the new chapter of his musical journey. In that same year, Andre 3000 was spotted in the studio with Shabaka in London. According to Shabaka, Andre contributed his flute work to a project that Shabaka had plans to release in the future. In 2023, the moment we were waiting for had finally arrived. But before that moment, we got another verse from 3000. He appeared on Killer Mike's Scientists and Engineers. While promoting his new album, Michael, Killer Mike appeared on Sway in the Morning and let it slip that Andre has a new album and he already has nine songs done and they were flying out to LA to listen to the album. I'm hearing is Dre got an album coming. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I think we fly out in a couple weeks to go listen to it. Wow, that's oh, amazing. Yeah. Yeah, Dre, Andre 3000 got an album coming. Oh, I thought you were joking. No, no. No, no, he does. He said he got he played him nine tracks oh of stuff God. he already had. Wow. Mm. So I that mean that. Dre sitting on uh, volumes of songs. I Man, I can't it. Days later, Killer Mike came out and backtracked his comments by saying he was high when he said that. Huge announcement to make. Well, I'm making it on Big Tiggers first. Come, Come on. on, Killer Mike. Trey ain't finna give y'all no something. <laughs> I, was, I was stoned out my mind playing teasing with y'all. Y'all that took the joke too serious. Trey, I, but, you know, he's always making music. He's never not making music. So I got a chance to hear a lot of cool stuff. And, again, yeah. some of the stuff went. If you want to hear Dre, though, I know where you can. It's his album called Michael that's out right now. <laughs> Come on. There is Dre, Future, and Killer Mike. Record called Science and Engineers. Yeah. So Tigger got it first. That I co-own Butter ATL. They put it up. So, Coke Butter ATL, we got to fix that. But everybody, I psych. Oh, Bruh. Yeah. You I didn't know before. that was on my list. Now, we've been here before. Hearing that from Killer Mike, <laughs> I know. Trust me, I know. He got that phone call. Simple as that. Then finally, the day came. Andre 3000 was releasing his first solo album, New Blue Sun. Out of nowhere, there was a track list, rollout, interviews, and artwork in a few days. No bars, though. And people were mad. But I already expected it. Because again, he talked about this. He talked about this in 2003. 20 years later, his vision finally came to life. Now, since the album release, Andre has sparked a massive conversation in the hip hop community. Between the supporters and artists, both have spoke out about Andre's perspective when it comes to rap and age. Andre himself has said that he doesn't have raps like that. Now, like, people think, oh man, he's just, sitting sitting on raps or like he's just holding or holding these raps hostage like i ain't got no raps like that but how true is that it's confirmed that andre already has songs in the vault with cardo got wings andre was in the studio with kate Trinata. even icy twat who was in divine council said in an interview that came out in may of 2023 that he also has joints with 3K in the vault as well. Bro, it's like, it's even now, like, he's got, like, <sighs> he's just, like, he's still a GOAT. I'm going to just say that. No, nah, I, I, like, I, I, I think Andre, I think Andre, if he shows too. He's still the GOAT. Like, he's still the GOAT. Like, Andre, please drop his, your, like, the shit you got tucked. You're still the GOAT, man. <laughs> drop that shit. I need <laughs> to hear that. I, I feel like, you know, if Andre 3000 came and dropped the project right now, I think the world would stop. It would. 100%. It would. Like, it would. that man is different. 
I would love to see that. I would love to hear him make niggas like, I feel like he would make niggas want to rap like and really think about shit. Mm -hmm. Like, nah, like I'm not and trying. And it sounds too like, it, it, yeah. yeah. Who knows how deep Andre 3000's vault is? I mean, even Andre himself has said that New Blue Sun was originally three hours long, and he already has made it clear that we will see some of that material from those sessions. And as of recent, Andre has been spotted in the studio with Joseph Lemberg, who produced the masterpiece How Much a Dollar Cost off of Kendrick Lamar's To Pimp a Butterfly. That right there is a collaboration i am super super excited about when it comes to the musical journey of andre 3000 it is on par with someone like prince who probably has millions of material lying in his vault shows rehearsals sound checks albums songs jam sessions all of the above that has yet to see the light of day even along with someone like a Stevie Wonder and D'Angelo and other artists who operate in the light of mystique. I strongly believe that as Andre enters the 50th chapter in his life next year, the fifth flow, I really do believe that we will get a rap project from him. But it will happen on the timing of God. I'm not here to put this expectation or pressure on him. With everything that he's been through with loss and grief and just pain, I'm just happy that he's here. I'm just happy that he's here keeping it going, fulfilling his purpose. And like I said before, if he gives us a project where it's him singing, playing the flute, the guitar, whatever it may be, I'm here for it all. I'm here to support the musical genius of Andre Benjamin. So that concludes everything. I hope and pray that you enjoyed this. This is the first time I've ever done something like this. <laughs> so, man, I just really hope that you guys just got so many gems and knowledge from this. And if it made you appreciate Andre's brilliance, his greatness even more, my job is done. That's all I ever wanted to do. I just wanted to display and talk about the greatness of our heroes because, you know, I'm a young voice. I'm a young black kid who cares about the art, who cares about our heroes from the past, present, and the future as well so let me know what you guys think especially if you guys want more of these and i most definitely will catch y'all on the next one until next time much love god bless you peace